Hey guys, so today we are going to be creating Eve the Mummy cake. There are only a few things that we know about Eve the Mummy. The first is that she is the eighth wonder of the world. The second is that her eye is considered the ninth wonder of the world. And she's also the tenth cutest mummy to have ever existed. Actually, maybe she's like the first because all the other ones are disgusting looking. Oh my god, that's not cute at all. Oh god, why does this exist? I love this cake, I love the character that we created, so let's get started. I'm Teresa calling from Dr. Chung's office, and you're watching your cholesterol levels because they are really high. I posted this picture of Eve in the community tab and I asked you guys to comment with her story. Who is she? Where does she come from? What did she do? Something, something, something. Keep on talking, because that's what people expect from you. <laughs> and I loved all of your stories, and I have to say that each one of them could be right, but they also could be wrong, because Eve is a mystery. Now, to create this cake, the first thing I'm going to do is level off the top of two six-inch half dome cakes. I'm also going to be using two four-inch round cakes. Now, instead of leveling off the top of the four-inch round cakes, I'm just going to carve off some of the caramelization at the top and use the cake humps as part of Eve's body. Now, to stack all of my cakes, I need to create a support system. I'm using PVC pipe. I just hot glued PVC pipe into the middle of my cake board and when the glued hardened I started to stack my cakes So I'm inserting my four inch cake upside down into the middle of the PVC pipe Then I added buttercream into the middle of the cake Leveled it out with my offset spatula and then added my second four inch round cake Now Eve's head is huge compared to her like little tiny body. How does a tiny body support this big old head? I don't know. It's very inconsistent but it's also a cartoon. So I started to carve away at my four inch cakes and I carved away a lot, a lot of a lot. If you've ever been to Costco, they've got these like huge chocolate chip muffins. You could probably use that and not have to bake these four inch round cakes. It's like I willed it down to like pretty much nothing. Now I added a pipe coupler for support and I just hammered it into place with my serrated knife. I'm adding more support to my cake with a circular piece of cardboard. I'm adding a little bit of buttercream to act as glue and then my first half dome cake. I'm going to cut my pipe down to the perfect size. And before I add my second half dome, I'm going to add another piece of support with a pipe coupler and some cardboard. That way there won't be that much pressure on the bottom cake, especially since there isn't that much of a support system underneath it. It's more likely that the bottom will collapse if you don't add the support in the middle. If you guys want to see more of my double-sided cakes, well, here's a commercial for you. Do you guys like slime monsters that are so wow much slime? How about a ghost that is very boo and much scare? Well, make sure you check out my Harold the Ghost Cake and my Cornelius and Boogie Slime Monster. They're very wow and doggo approved. End of commercial. After I finished stacking my cake, I gave it a crumb coat and then placed it into the fridge for about two hours while I was watching The Walking Dead. I'm playing catch up because they just started the next season, but I'm a season behind, so I'm like rushing through all the episodes. Now, if you haven't watched The Walking Dead, I think you should watch it. Um, if anything, just to watch my favorite character, Carol. Carol's my favorite character because at the beginning of The Walking Dead series, she's very weak. She was abused by her husband. She didn't know how to leave the relationship. She has this very like damaged mentality. But as the series progresses and as she learns how to cope and survive within the zombie apocalypse, she becomes like a very formidable leader. You know, at the beginning of the series, she kind of needed the support of the like rest of her cast. But at some point she like finds her strength and she's like, you know what, I'm gonna leave for like two months and I'll see you guys when I get back. <laughs> her personality is like day and night. So go watch The Walking Dead, but also know that there's a lot of killing and shooting of zombies and just rotting flesh. So maybe don't go watch it if you don't like that kind of stuff. Now after I finished watching all of my episodes, I took my cake out of the fridge. I placed on a black glove and wet it with some water. I just ran my hands all over the surface of the cake so that I could prepare it and smoothen it out 
for the fondant layer. You can definitely put a second coat of buttercream, but I was the only one who's gonna eat this. And this is kind of like a single serving cake because there isn't that much cake in it. So I don't like buttercream, so that's why I didn't add it. Now the writings about Eve were very minimal because most of them were destroyed by her haters. That's right, I'm talking to you, Janet. Nobody knew anything about her and because people don't handle the unknown very well, they're just like, you know what, maybe people in the future don't need to remember her, so we'll just destroy all of these hieroglyphics, that's fine. So what imaginary scientists have been able to gather from the hieroglyphics that remain are that she was the daughter of a nobleman who tried to overthrow one of the pharaohs, or Hold up, maybe she was a pharaoh who was trying to be overthrown by a nobleman. I mean, it's all just pictures, you know, and you're kind of playing charades, so we don't actually know if these hieroglyphics were even in the right order. Now, I wrapped my fondant in this dirty white, sort of very papyrusy, maybe dead scrolly kind of fondant. I don't have any white in my colors. And that is very sad. So I wrapped it around and just placed the seam at the back of the cake. Now using some sculpting tools, I pushed the bottom of the fondant into the bottom of the cake board so I'd have this nice organic line. And I'm just gonna blend the top of the fondant into the bottom of my mummy's face. Sometimes when I cut the fondant line at the neck, there's this like gap where you can see buttercream. And I don't like that, so I learned that if you just blend it into the bottom and you place the next piece of fondant on top of it, you don't have that problem. Eve is still alive, but every time she's asked about her origin, her story changes. It just keeps changing, you guys. You know, sometimes she says that she was created during the time of the Egyptian pharaohs. Other times she says that she was created as a member of the tribe of Maya, which is like this like group of like people who gather around in a circle and they just read Maya Angelou poems. And you know, all of them know why the cage bird sings. Do you? Janet, no you don't. And sometimes when she's asked, all she says is that she's Illuminati. <music> I wrapped my second piece of fondant on top and I wasn't really sure how to do this properly. I'm just winging it all the time, you guys. But I wrapped the fondant and made sure that the front of Eve's head was flat and perfect. But yo, the back of this cake looks terrible. <laughs> now I smoothened it out as much as I could, but I knew that her eye was gonna be in the center of the back of her head. So I just smushed it enough so that it was flat around her eye. And then I cut away all of the excess fondant. My cookie cutters were all too small to create Eve's eye, so I'm using my cookie cutter holder. I just made an imprint and then used a paring knife to cut away the excess fondant. Then I created her third eye with a round piece of red fondant. After that, I just started to add all of my mummy strips. Now to give my character a little more depth, I'm covering her with two different colored strips. Some of the strips are a shade of gray darker, and then the other strips are like three shades of gray darker. Now I drew Eve before I even started making the cake. So I just used my picture as a guide for where all of these strips would go. Just made sure that each of them was the same thickness and length so that I could get all of her features just right. Now when I was wrapping the strips around the back of the cake, I just winged it. I just wrapped the strips wherever they fell and however I thought they looked nice. Because the fondant morphs so much, it's always gonna be different. All of the fondant strips that I wrapped around her eyes, I just cut them a little short so that I could keep it exposed. And then using some fondant tools, I just tried to make it look like the bandages or the strips were torn. Now I'm using a ball fondant tool to create two indentations for her front eyes. And then I rolled out some logs of fondant and just used them to create her left leg and both of her arms. I'm just wrapping all of her limbs in some strips as well so that they match her body. Now her right leg is made up of fondant as well. I wanted it to look like the bandage or the paper had unraveled. So you just see this little like chicken looking leg. Scientists used to believe that Eve was created and existed around the same time that Egyptian 
pharaohs reigned. But after carefully examining her exposed right leg, that looks like a chicken bone. They can date her back to the Jurassic period. Now everybody's like extremely confused because like is she dinosaur? Is she human? Who wrapped her if all there were is dinosaurs? Maybe it was like an alien or something? Is she an alien? Will we ever know? Now I placed on two red eyes at the front and gave them some catch lights with some white fondant. And then I started to create her third eye. I really wanted this to be a double-sided cake and all of my double-sided cakes have like a really cute side and then they've got this more realistic scary look inside. So to create her third eye on the back, First, I added some black fondant to give her a pupil. And then I decided that if I wanted it to look more realistic, I'd have to paint on all of the details. Now Evie's existence is the eighth wonder of the world. So her eye is the eighth, ninth wonder? How many are there? Her eye is the ninth wonder of the world. And that's because nobody knows what it does. There's a lot of speculation that it keeps her alive, but a great number of people believe that it allows her to see into the future, which there is some evidence for because she is an executive producer on That's So Raven, you guys. She wrote the theme song, you guys. It's the future I can see, I can see. Why does she say it like that? Oh, come on, Raven Simone. So to finish this cake off, I covered the floor with some black shimmer sprinkles. And voila, my Eve the Mummy cake was complete. So who is Eve? No one knows. Nobody will ever know. I don't think any of us will ever live long enough to get the real story of Eve out of her. But I'm curious, now that you've heard all of the gibberish and hullabaloo come out of my mouth, who do you think she is? And what does her magic eye do? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure you hit that notification button so you can see everything I post in the community tab and you can be a part of future videos. I'm gonna have to like limit you guys because I love what you write, but you're writing paragraphs and I'm like, how do I turn this into one story? It's so hard. But I love and read everything that you guys write. You guys are so imaginative. I love you guys. I will see you very soon. Peace.